Hey guys, what is up? And thanks for watching one of my videos. I'm Stephanie, just in case you did not know. Um, on this channel, we're going to be doing a little something a little bit different. Um, I normally do makeup, lifestyle type of thing, like vlogs and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, hair stuff. Um, but I actually want to just dibble dabble into some different genres and just like broaden my horizons. Um, we're going to start doing what's called Tea Tuesdays. Um, so this is going to be the first segment of it. Um, today is Tuesday. And it's going to be, this will be up probably tonight, maybe like around 7-ish is what I'm hoping. Um, and what I want to do is just go over the weekly stuff that happened. Um, and just every Tuesday we just come together, we spill a little tea, we drink a little tea, and then we go about our business. Um, and so, that's what we're going to be doing every Tuesday. So, like I said, this is the first installment. So, hi! My name is Stephanie. Just in case you didn't know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe while you're subscribing. There's a bell that, notif that will notify you every time I do an upload. Don't forget to sign off in the comments about any and all topics that we did discuss today. Um, and we're going to just keep it short and sweet. Um, I have my handy dandy iPad here so we can go ahead and get it cracking so first and foremost um just to go ahead and start this off we are going to start this off on a, on a very somber note um I do want to give just a moment of silence for the nine victims that we did lose let me start, say a little better <clears throat> So to go ahead and start this video off, I want to unfortunately start it on a somber note. Um, I do want to give just a moment of silence for the nine victims that we did lose over the weekend um, on the 26th of January. Um, their names include Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant, John Altobelli, Carrie Altobelli, Alyssa, Alyssa Altobelli, Christina Mosser, Sarah Chester, Peyton Chester and Pilot Ara Zobayan. So just I um, just want to give just a moment of silence for them and um, the families, the of the victims, including friends, families, teammates, um, and any and everybody that was affected by this, including fans um, and you know fellow spectators of the sport. Um, I do want to just give them just a moment of silence and respect um, for the tragedies that we did occur. We did have a tragedy over the over the weekend. It also ended up being the same night as the Grammys. Um, so there was a lot of scrambling that had to be done in the city of Los Angeles because the Grammys were also hosted and as they normally are in the Staples Center, which is also the home of Kobe Bryant. Um, so it was very really a bittersweet type of moment. Um, I do want to talk about the Grammys. Um, now to me i mean a lot of you know black and brown people aren't really the biggest fan of the grammys just because they're not really friendly of black and brown creators um and um all that we have um to offer it was you know a little uh, it, it is a little uh, um just to see um a person like billy eilish you know basically go home and you know do a whole supermarket sweep of um the grammys and go home with however many she went home with um just because there were you know singers songwriters um rappers that honestly i felt like deserved it more DJ Khaled, um, Nipsey Hussle, and John Legend did take home the Grammy for Best Rap Slash Sung Performance for Hire, which they also sung that or performed that um, as a tribute to Nipsey, and they actually did a tribute to Nipsey, which I was actually kind of shocked about that the Grammys actually did that just because, one, Nipsey was not as mainstream as he, as, you know, did, you know, I'm trying to get a white word, right word in the state without offending people. Um, um, you know, he did um, create wealth for his community. Anything that he receives, he put back in his community, which is an awesome thing. Um, do I believe that he was the icon that people are saying that he is? No. He was maybe a legend in the making, I can say that, but he didn't, there, there's not enough body of work to sit here and put him on the pedestal that people put him on the pedestal of. Um, People are just like conflating the person with like the art with the art it well the the art with the person and that's not necessarily the same thing um, in my eyes. Now you can you know say I'm lying, say I'm dying, 
um, you know, and just disagree with me. That's that that's your point of view. I would love to hear, you know, your point of view on this. One country song um that I did hear um last night, it was, you know, give me my flowers while I'm living, don't give them to me while I die. And I feel like he just rose to this like legend status simply because of the, simply because of his death. Um and I honestly truly, you know, um shots fired, I don't know. If anybody's gonna agree with me, it's okay if you don't. I only reason I feel like the only reason that he's getting the accolades he's getting now is because he's dead and because because people can profit off his death. Point blank period. That's really honestly the only, the only truly thing that I feel like he is even got that Grammy. Um and all the other awards he has gotten is because of his death. Period. Same thing with XXX and Sacion. Same thing with Juice World. Same thing with all these other rappers who have just tragically died too soon. They Death is profitable. And so, same thing honestly with Kobe Bryant now. Death is profitable. Um, Now, Tyler the Creator did win um, his uh, the the rap nomination for the best rap album. Um, I did ag I did kind of agree with the things he said um, during his acceptance speech. Like um, you know how like on the Grammys they do um, you do your acceptance speech you know in front of the cameras, but then they also have a press release right after the Grammys where people can do like add, add more to their speech. You know they only give you like ten seconds. Um, just because the thing is like 30 hours long and it's like basically a concert like you only you only see two awards on the actual show itself the rest of them are, are all given you know during the press run um so I did agree with some of the things he said I'll go ahead and play a clip now on one side I'm very grateful that uh, what I made could just be you know uh, acknowledged in a world like this um, but also it sucks that whenever we and I mean guys that look like me do anything that's genre bending or that's anything they always put it in a rap or urban category which is and I don't like that urban word it's just a politically correct way to say the n-word to me so when I hear that I'm just like why can't we just be in pop why can't it just, you know what I mean so I felt like a half of me feels like the the rap nomination was a backhanded compliment like oh uh my little cousin wants to play the game. Let's give him the unplugged controller so he could shut up and feel good about it. I don't like the term urban, um, as he stated as well. Um, I, I, I will agree with that. Urban is just a, you know, the politically correct way to say the N word or na you know, uh, naker. When they don't know what something is, but because, but because it comes from a black person, it's automatically in the rap category. The they try to do the same thing with Old Town Road. Old Town Road is like this new thing where it mixes and it blends um, different genres together because the beat itself you can consider hip-hop but the lyrics are considered country and so it's just like it's just it's these different things Tyler the Creator has to me Tyler the Creator is it, he's his own genre like he really does conflate different genres together in order to be who he is just because of the fact that technically people want to consider him rap because he's black point blank period just like I said if they don't know what you are, they want to put you in the rap category. And to me, Igor was not rap. And look at his performance. It wasn't rap. Like, it's just... He's not really, like, a label type of person. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just... He's him. Charlie and the God had a very different perspective that I didn't see. Um, he feels as though... Um, that... Um, Tyler the Creator was kind of downing rap and hip-hop. Um, because they put him in that category. Now, I didn't take it that way. He wants his recognition like the correct way, not the politically not the politically correct way. Fashion, it was I. Right. Um, my um, biggest takeaway was Ariana Grande or Grande, however she pronounces her name, because the hotel is not the Spanish way that everyone says it. Um, that was yes, ma'am. That tool ensemble, which is breathtaking. And um, so also with Billy Porter with the whole like um, shades moving and then kind of find out his stylist had actually cre um, had the um, clicker that controlled that. So anytime he motioned to him to open it, he would open it for him. And that just was, you know, I love I love Billy Porter. He is definitely one of the people who, who likes to take risks when it comes to fashion. Um, 
Lizzo did get her two um, her two Grammys, which I, I am proud of. I loved her ensemble that all white. She looked breathtaking. Um, I loved every minute of it. I also loved Lil Nas X and the whole like, you know, wipe me down, pink me down, um, little ensemble that he had going on. Um, that was real cute or whatever. Now, one thing I do want to talk about for sure is um, Terry Crews and this Gabrielle Union thing that's going on. Um, I do want to talk about that. I am, I am on. I, I never was as biggest, the biggest fan of Terry Crews, uh, but now for sure I am honestly disgusted um, by him. Um, his body is disgusting. He is disgusting as a person. I just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. Not a fan at all. At all. Recently. Um, as we all know, Gabrielle Union has come out and say that she received some discriminatory actions against her on uh, the popular show America's Got Talent. It has n nothing about this has been defeated. She has several witnesses to back up her claim. Like this is a thing. There are witnesses. She she has the receipt. There are a lot of people that have slept with Damon. Don't even do that. Do you want me to, to bring the receipts? Do I need to bring the receipt, oh, no. baby girl? Oh, no. I got receipts. Oh, it is now under investigation by ABC, and they're gonna, you know, do what they do or whatever. Um, and so here come the Tootsie Roll looking um Terry Crews. Oh, you know, I want to be a good Negro. Um, uh, Master told me to come talk to y'all, so I'm gonna come talk to y'all. Looking like Uncle Ruckus ass come up on whatever show I want to say he whatever Gail King was on is what I want to say I want to say he was on CBS NBC whatever 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 I know it wasn't Good Morning America you're at the show is it is, is there a toxic atmosphere first of all I can't speak for sexism because I'm not a woman but I can't speak on behalf of any racism comments that was never my experience on America's Got Talent in fact it was the most diverse place I have ever been in my 20 years of entertainment. When you look at what the allegations are about, yeah. um, it was given by an unnamed source. Uh, my thing is, you know, it, it's funny because I believe you should listen to women. You should always believe women. So I asked my wife mm. what I should do. And she was like, first of all, if, if it's coming from an unnamed source, because Gabrielle Union has not made any statement to this day about any of these allegations publicly. Yeah. So have she's, you spoken to her? I, I have not. I have reached out, but I have not heard anything. And so my thing was, my wife said, well, if she hasn't made a statement, mm. why would you? Yeah. Mm. And I said, okay. you know what? I'm going to listen to her. Right. Basically, he, he, he refutes every single thing that has ever come out of Gabriel Union's mouth. His, he asked his wife about it. His wife told him to shut the hell up. But what did he do? Not shut the hell up. Like, sir, listen to your wife. Just, that's just like me saying... I had never experienced racism. That means racism never experienced. That mean, doesn't mean that other light-skinned people or mixed by racial people don't experience racism. That's a bold-faced motherfucking lie. I know that. You know that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, my, my truth and my walking through life has nothing to do with the person standing next to me in their walk. And I can't sit here and discredit anything that person has th has stood by in their truth and has receipts for her truth. I can't discredit anything that she has to say. For her to sit here and be one of the first people to back you as a black man when you were so scared to come out against your sexual assault, the very inclination, the very first chance you get you decide to d 10 toes down and just punch her dance back in the face. Like, to me, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Like, this woman has stood by you and was like, I stand with you, you know, and we're going to walk together and I'm going to be here to support you while you, but you know, tell your story of your victimhood and yet you want to sit here and discredit mine. Like, the, as Malcolm X once always has always said, you know, the most unappreciated disrespected woman in america is a black woman and any chance a black man gets to throw a black woman down he's gonna do it unfortunately he's gonna do it and that sucks but i digress um then we have the whole like meat mill situation going on i don't know meat mill said that you know he um that he um you know 
was trying to squash the beef with Mr. Petty and Mr. Petty was like, you know, that's not the time nor the place. Nikki was finna fight him with her both two little fucking midgets trying to fight, you know, Meek Mill's like six something. But we all seen this little nigga run. Like we've seen him box. It's like we know, so like like I just it's hilarious. This whole altercation that's going on just gave me life. It was hilarious. Okay, so moving on. So, um, in other news, uh, Miss Lena White, or Waste, however you pronounce her name, um, has announced that her and her wife are separating after 2.5 seconds. They are pulling a Kim Kardashian and a Chris Humphreys, and they're, gonna run, they're giving them a run for their money. Um, apparently, she had got caught cheating with... Harriet Tubman was walking around with a fucking nice shiny fucking dress on with a fucking crown on her head when she was taking slaves to freedom with Harriet Tubman um the actress that played Harriet Tubman I don't know how I feel about that um a lot of people are saying now that Lena is community uh strap on which you know hey it is what it is sister um she looked like an ancient ass nigga don't she I'm just kidding I'm just kidding um but um it's tragic it's sad i just don't get why there was a rush to get married if you knew you weren't gonna stay married if you knew you couldn't keep your strap on in, your, in, the, in if you knew you couldn't keep your strap on in the closet in the dresser why get married why i don't understand i don't i just i don't understand I don't understand people. I don't understand people who get in, who, who get in monogamous monogamous relationships and cheat. I don't understand cheating. Period. You know, if you want to be single, be single, but don't like cause you know emotional, physical distress to another person just because you 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 don't know what that causes to a person's psyche. I will never understand it. Um. So also this week, um, Nene and um, Wendy Williams got in got into a little spit spat, whatever. Um, I I feel like it was a, pub a publicity stunt, honestly, on Nene's part and on Nene's camp, um, just because Nene is looking for sympathy and payola when it comes to Real Housewives of Atlanta because she's seeing that these ratings are not going down and she is being seen less and less. I honestly feel like she's just being, you know, phased out. They're trying to just see how ratings are going to do because she's been off the season before, you know, back when she was Hollywood City, you know, back when she was getting that Trump money, you know, and she moved to, you know, bought her a little house on the heels or whatever. I think Bravo's just facing her out. After that closet situation, they were just done. Production doesn't want to work with her. It's been said plenty of times by production being slipped, you know, slipping stuff to the media that, that they don't want to work with her. They're tired of working with her. They're tired of the abuse that they receive from her. You know, she put a man in the hospital, chipped this man's tooth, you know. Nigga had bruises, all this stuff. And so she got into what with Andy. We all know Andy is the number one executive producer of all these little franchise shows on Bravo. He is the mother of Bravo. So it's just like, you know, it is what it is. You know, you gotta kiss up to the white man. The white, if the white man don't like you, hey, chucka chucking up the deuces. You know, I feel like she knew what she was doing when she texted Wendy and was saying she wanted to quit. Cause we all know how Wendy is. She owns it. She owns her own talk show. Why would you tell a talk show host some tea? Like that's her job is, is to do that. And so it's just like, I just, I just feel like it was a publicity stunt on her side. I feel like she used Wendy. She did Wendy did what she was supposed to do. She was, she slipped that little text message in there talking about some, you know, it's not a health scare, but something's going on that we are gonna, you know, be our hearts are melting, whatever, whatever. Apparently in Atlanta, they are talking that Greg has a love child or it, I don't know if the, the child's actually, you know, alive or whatever, but they're saying that, you know, he got a little oops, baby or whatever, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, but in Atlanta, that's what they're saying. And so it's just like, that's what supposed to be like melts our hearts, which it would make sense because, you know, that's what they, cause you know, they got, they became friends so close and it's like, I feel like that would bond them if they both, you know, were dealing with oops babies. Cause you know, I know Wendy's husband had an oops baby. Now he, you know, going to the unemployment line. And so it's just like, that would make sense. The streets are all, we're also talking, you didn't hear this from me, but who's also saying that he faked cancer. So 
who knows what's really true we don't we don't know the truth only god and the people involved know the truth so it is what it is we're just gonna wait and hear some more stuff you know that's going on um check on b scott because we all know b scott got the team when it comes to um housewives tyler perry tyler perry tyler perry that's a whole video by itself is tyler perry so i'm just gonna save my comments for tyler perry for the video because tyler perry tyler perry tyler perry Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, you just trash. <laughs> you trash. But there'll be another video coming out about um, about him because, like I said, that's a whole video by itself, not a little segment. Um, and so, yeah. So that's it for Tea Tuesday. Um, let me know what you think about the video. Um, if you like this video, if you like like this kind of content, whatever, whatever. Like I said, I'm dibbling and dabbling, trying to just find, you know, whatever floats my boat and just keep swimming, Dory. Um, so just let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about the, the topics that we talked about today. Sign off, excuse me, sign off in the comments down below. And until next time, bye guys. Mwah.